This is a little different. We wanted to give you a sneak preview of our next segment when the world famous concert violinist Anna Kiko Myers will join me to play this new Stradivarius that she just bought at auction. In fact, she joins me now. Welcome. Thank you so much, Keith. May, may I? Of course. Would you like That's, to play it? Do you hold it? Well, I can't play, can't play anything, but you, do you hold it all ever from the. From the, from the, from the what? Do you play any other instruments? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Come on, admit we got you for a second. The real $3.6 million violin is just fine. In our number one story, the violin I did not break, the Molitor Stradivarius, a storied instrument of notable provenance. But just what does a $3.6 million legend sound like? We'll find out presently as its newest owner, concert violinist, and my co-conspirator there, Anna Kiko Myers, actress, performs for us. But first, the backstory. There are only about 650 Stradivarius instruments in the world today, all created in the legendary Italian shop of Antonio Stradivari. Stradivari's unique interpretation of design and geometry gave his violins unparalleled sound and quality that other violin makers have tried but have been unable to replicate. Which brings us to this Strad, made in 1697. French socialite Madame Juliette Recamier gave it to a young general in Napoleon's army, Count Gabriel Jean Joseph Molitor, who in turn gave the instrument its name, and it's believed to have also been owned, although this hasn't been verified, by Napoleon Bonaparte. Eventually, it found its way to this country in the 20th century, owners ranging from the Curtis Institute in Philadelphia to the violinist Elmar Oliveira. For earlier this month, it sold for $3,600,000, highest price ever for a musical instrument at an auction. And joining me now, as promised, the proud owner of this 1697 Molitor uh, Stradivarius, the concert violinist Anne Akiko Myers, whose latest CD is called Seasons Dreams. Welcome again. Thank you very much, Keith. All right, as I asked once on Twitter, three and a half million dollars and it doesn't play itself? <laughs> it makes me cappuccinos in the morning. All right, well, we've got something else. All right, why, we've heard the sort of technical explanation as the artist, why is a Stradivarius extraordinary? It's the sound. Yeah. It's really like no other. It's extraordinary. And the history of the violin mm -hmm. also, um, and the condition of the violin, it's like it was made yesterday. It's just in it's perfect condition, and it's over 300 years old. Did you hesitate at all playing it for the first time? No, I couldn't wait to get my mitts on it, <laughs> actually, and um, people had to keep me away, you know. <laughs> Was this a goal, or is it, I presume it's a goal of anybody who ever pick, picks up a violin seriously to eventually play one, but to own one and play one? Yes, that's also very rare, and I'm very fortunate to have found this violin, that it was made available, and that I found it and, um, and play it now and can share it with the world. Uh, but you're not going like, get to get a second one as a backup, right? Out of those prices, <laughs> one will have to suffice. Well, and that doesn't even inc include the price of the bow. The bow is like another two hundred thousand dollars. So. Lord. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I'm I'm going to make sure we have enough time for your performance, and I've done enough of the Jim Gray, LeBron James act in setting this up. <laughs> what are we going to hear as we hear a three point six million dollar musical instrument? A Little Summertime by George Gershwin. Oh, Gershwin, as presented by Anne Akiko Myers. I'll leave the you to have the stage and I'll come back when you're done. Thank you. Thank you.
Wow. <laughs> What's obviously a, a, a concert performer such as yourself can make one instrument sound m like more than one instrument, but is it peculiar to the Stradivarius that gives you that effect of having an entire a uh, entire orchestra with you at one point? It sounded like multiple, four or five different instruments. Mm -hmm. Is that unique to it? Definitely. That's wow. what makes the sound like no other. But that's, I mean, that's a real pal, that's a perfect piece to, de to demonstrate that, isn't it? Uh, even though Napoleon might be shaking <laughs> in his boots and rolling in his grave, hearing a little George Gershwin on his Whatever violin. Whatever about it. Well, what, 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 do you think that sort of historical implication, is that important to you when you think of that? That's, that was built by a man uh, and played by another music legend who lived in a country that the man would have maybe have heard of as a colonial outpost for the French and the, and the in the English in the 16, late 1600s. I definitely think of the history uh, with this violin every time I put my hands around the neck of it. You can't help but remember. And, and the Napoleon aspect, do, do you, have you looked further into that? Is it verified in some? Is yes, it, it is verified. It is verified. It, yes. it was Napoleon's. It's in a book by Goodkind that it was owned by Napoleon. Did he play the violin or did he just have other people play it for or, that, or other I'm people not play sure it? Of. Did he have it on Elba? Is that how he if he if he'd taken it with him to Elba, would he have been a good I'm sorry, I'm just going off <laughs> of historical references. I must I must ask you, do you, you don't worry about its value when you play it or travel with it or anything else? Well, I definitely do. Um, you know, but I don't see any guards out here. I mean, do I look like an honest man to you? <laughs> my bodyguards are in my dressing room. <laughs> Well, I'm, I, I can yeah, imagine. Yeah, that would be my four-month-old daughter. I was going to say, that's, she looked, well, she looked, she looked like, she looked suspicious at me when I walked in there in the, in the dresser. Yeah. Uh, Anna Kiko Myers, uh, it's, it's, it's marvelous to have you here. Congratulations Thank on it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was extraordinary. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you kindly. All right, well, I don't know how we're going to top that tomorrow. That's October 26th. We'll try a special comment here tomorrow night. We'll go candidate by candidate with, and I hesitate to say this in the same segment, segment in which we heard Ann's work, the Tea Party. I'm Keith Olbermann. Good night. Good luck. And now we head north to Alaska with guests Senator Murkowski, Mr. McAdams, and Mr. Miller. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Rachel Maddow. Good evening, Rachel. Good evening, Keith. I am so excited that we finally persuaded Joe Miller to be on this show. I cannot believe it. Uh, I was sharing the sentiment of all of us back here in New York. <laughs> I hear you, and I hear the doubt in your voice beneath it. Thank you, no, Keith. No, Appreciate no, no, it. No, no, no. Uh, no are, just getting my popcorn. No. <laughs> <laughs> we are live at the Taproot in Anchorage, Alaska.